Part 1. In Ota Ward, next to Come Up to Technical Academy, there's a young man inside of the workshop adjacent to the school. <laughs> the young man hums as oh that was humming. The young man hums as he works away, messing with some wires inside of his otherwise human-looking arm. This continues for a short while, and then an older man sits in front. And then an older man sits in front of the youth and begins to talk with him. What's got your spirits up, Kurugane? I heard you humming from across the workshop. Oi, Gramps! I was just waiting for a friend from another school. Oh? Is it that wannabe astronaut line? You two are pretty close, aren't you? But that would mean. Yeah, we just finished a new prototype rocket. We're going for a test flight. Heh <laughs> The test will require very precise maneuvering, so I wanted to perform maintenance on my arm before we get started. Nice thinking. You need to be sure to keep your gear greased. The most useful tool is always at the ready. The man turns his attention to the young man's aforementioned rocket. Oh ho! So this is your new rocket. The shape is quite novel, maybe? <laughs> oh man, my dirty mind. Gramps, that's just a pile of scrap wood. The rocket's over here. Oh, oh, right. I couldn't see it very clearly. <laughs> that's kind of worrying. Has your sight been a problem? Is your prosthetic eye adjusted correctly? I, I adjusted it myself yesterday. When I take out the one eye, though, it's hard to get a good look at what I'm doing. Here, I'll take a look at it for you, since I'm already working on my arm. Don't give me that lip. Remember who picked you off the street. In spite of the tough words, a smile takes over the man's face as he ruffles the young man's hair. <laughs> Mentorship. It's beautiful. I suppose you are pretty handy with these sorts of gadgets. Here you go. Take a look. With a loving smile, the man removes one of his eyes, passing it to the young technician. The youth takes his time adjusting it, and then returns it. What was he doing? Was it the rocket or was his eye? I don't know. No, just some random gadgets, I guess. Whoa, this looks like a whole new world. Yeah, it's his eye. I could probably even read a newspaper. That's my apprentice for you. I'm your apprentice? It's only natural that I can do that much. <laughs> I can see... I can see all of my muscle, down to the very fiber. The older man turns towards the massive mirror hanging in the workshop and begins flexing to get a better view of his muscles. Hmm? <laughs> my muscles are stunning as ever. If there is one thing you youngins can't outdo me on, it's my bodybuilding. As the man is admiring his finest piece of work, his face drops as he notices something reflected in the background. Huh? <laughs> the man lets out an unintentional groan. Lined up against the wall are a number of swords. He furrows his brow as he takes one in his hand. His low growl of consternation gradually crescends into a furious roar. What the hell is this? You good for nothing, freeloader! Get out of here, Mustachi! Show yourself! His voice could crack both the heavens and the earth, and another youth comes stumbling from the shadows in response. Whoa! Where's the fire? What's all the ruckus about? What isn't this about? What the hell are you, your swords doing here? I put them there. They were in the way. Got a problem? A problem? You bet your boots I do. Is this how you treat your blades? You better be putting these in sheets. Line the tips up gently and slide the blades in with care. Polish them daily too. I better not catch you using old oil either. And even though it should be obvious, remember to use cloths for oiling and polishing each side. Everyone needs to take care of their own tools, so take care of them! Whoa, 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 why are you getting... Why are you riding me so hard, Gramps? Talk about minor details, sheesh! Heed my warning, Sashi. For a soldier like yourself, each blade should be an extension of your body. 
The young boy, Musashi, wears a grim look on his face as he responds. Give me a break, old man. One of my older me's may be a, a damn artist, but the rest? I'm a bodyguard. My blade's just a tool. What's the point of spit shattering up? Any tool should be like a part of your own body. How do you not understand that? Give it a rest. Trust me. We get it. If anyone knows about tools being a part of you, it's us. So, you obviously don't get a thing. I'll just have to beat it into you. When I'm done with you, you'll know exactly how to take care of your tools. The old man berates the young boy mercilessly. He then looks over at the boy's figure, noticing his disheveled appearance. First, you're going to take a bath. Clean behind the ears. You better wash that mousy hair of yours while you're at it. A bath? In your dreams! Just try to make me. You'll never catch me alive. Hey, get back here! I said, get back here! <laughs> Just a typical day in Kamata. The young technician mutters to himself, staring at the workshop window before he continues to work on his arm. In Oto Ward, in front of the Kamata Technical Academy, this is the place that the Vice Guild Master marked on the map for us. Is this Kamata Guild? Kamata Technical Academy, huh? Stay on your toes. We've already we are already at the heart of the Kamata Guild's portal territory. I've heard this is only territory being held in neutrality as far as guild, the Guild War goes. So it's called the Guild War, huh? That said, we'd best stay on our toes. I guess. Honestly, you should probably be more wary of me, seeing as we, the Genesires, have a history of tricking you. I trust you, Ark. I'm happy to hear that, but... The entrance is over there. Let's go take a look, Arthur. We both head towards the main entrance. After walking for a few minutes, Ark speaks up. Is something wrong? You've been awfully quiet since the two of us set out alone. Is there something you want to talk about? You seem to be hesitant. So how about... I see if I can guess. Could it be that you want to talk about Mother, Father, and Azathoth? Ark watches you for a moment, taking your silence as agreement. So, you do then. Do you perhaps feel as though you're, you sacrificed my family, leaving them to their fate so you could escape? Neither you nor anyone else forced that fate on them. They simply did as they pleased. You have nothing to feel guilty about. It's not exactly that. I mean, it is, but... Should we really go ahead with this? Are you sure you want to end this loop? You... If we really are caught in a loop, you could see your family again. So could Moritaka and Tadasomo. I see. So that's what was on your mind. Your heart aches on behalf of myself and the others. Eric comes to stop and turns to look deeply into your eyes. In a sense, I was thinking about bringing the same thing up to you. If we truly are trapped in a loop, I could probably meet my family again. Just as when an app battle ends, all things, including this, should return to square one. However, there's still so much I don't know. How might Tokyo be caused to reset itself? What exactly triggers the activation of the loop? Furthermore, why is Tokyo even stuck in the loop in the first place? Previously, you mentioned that you wish to destroy the wall in order to end the app battles. Based on what we have now learned from Michael and Amaterasu, though, I have one concern. Perhaps it has occurred to Shiro, or even you already, but... So you've noticed too? Assuming that the whole of this Tokyo is caught in the loop... What could be causing that loop to occur? Ark brings a hand to their chin, sorting through their thoughts. 
The theory is that destroying the wall around Tokyo could break the loop. But could that actually be the cause? That's true. That only enables it. Someone had to commence some sort of app battle in that grand scale. Michael and the others destroyed the walls, isolating the six wards and everything reset. No more walls, if that's the case. Shouldn't each loop start within the walls around Tokyo? Shouldn't each loop start with a wall around Tokyo destroyed? Huh. That's interesting. Wait, is it interesting? Hmm. I mean, it's, destroying the walls isn't the only way to reset it, right? I mean, in Map battle, you're not destroying the walls of a map battle. You're just claiming victory. So I would assume that was the case for the loop too. Some sort of partial victory happened before another loop happened. But based on what Ark is implying, there might be a greater set of walls outside of the walls of Tokyo. Or maybe it's a different sort of phenomenon entirely. If the Tokyo Wall works just like how everything resets after an app battle when an app when a battle zone is terminated, there shouldn't be a wall in the beginning. Yet there is. Uh, there shouldn't be an app battle in the beginning. I mean. The wall is always there as long as the loop exists, isn't it? It would only dis like disappear outside of the battle. Hmm. If destroying the wall releases the loop, how is it that the loop resets with a fully formed wall? Hmm. Well, like I said, it might not be the only trace of the loop, but uh, let's just see where the narrative takes us. Yeah. One more thing. The memories that my brother showed to you. Your memories of always being killed by a friend at the conclusion of the loop. Why must you be repeatedly slain? Is that then tied to the recurrence of this loop? I th yeah, that was what was being implied, right? His death, my death. Somehow leading to someone else being the victor uh, and causing the loop to, to reset, or at least the battle to end before being reset again. Hmm. I think... maybe... no. I can say for sure that there must still be some aspect of the game that we don't understand. So... we shouldn't destroy the wall? Maybe the Tokyo Wall is special somehow. This has to be some sort of trap. That may or may not be true. We still don't know. That's why I think we must press on. We need to learn more so we can make an informed choice. That's the reason we're gathering information on sacred artifacts, correct? I hope that we can answer these questions and make the right choices after we've learned more. Sorry I brought up the question. No, it's not that. You're worried about me, right? Thank you. You're so kind, Arathen. Jeez, that was close. Grams almost got me in the tub. Closest shave I've ever had in a while. This girl never gets attacked. Always so peaceful. Ain't no way to make my name as a samurai for hire here. One thing I like about being with Shishi, never a lack of rivals and weirdos to fight. I wonder if things will stay like this. What you think, Usashi squad? Should we all have a board meeting? The young boy's four other swords stand at attention around him. And he addresses them as though conducting a tactical meeting. <coughs> By all means, I find myself quite in agreement with you regarding the bathing incident. <laughs> Yet, as an artist, I feel an obligation to admit that I must agree with the old gentleman. In regards to the treatment of the blades, at least. As far as the road to come, however, hmm. What say the professional? Well, as a professional, I personally think the decision to sell our swords to these Kamata blighters was a mistake from the top. The way I see it, we're, we'd be better off finding another guild where, the, where we can build our reputation as part of that organization too, what? 
Is that all? Anything to add? Four? Five? Up to me, huh? Hmm. Okay, then. So, what do I do? This must be the entrance. Oh, it's a workshop that's attached to the school. This is the home of the Kamata Crafters, experts on sacred artifacts. It feels a little weird showing up out of the blue, but... Hello? Is anyone home? Ah, <laughs> Kuragani! <laughs> it's just kind of funny how he just is perfectly framed in that spot. <coughs> Ark peers into the building, catching a glimpse of a figure walking through the school. Oh, perfect. Let's try asking that man. How about you wait here for a minute? I'll go talk to him. Little Salman! Whoa, Master! I was listening, you know? I heard everything! Were you serious just now? You weren't right, right? Uh, I've seen you a lot today. Yeah, about that. Were you seriously questioning whether or not you should really destroy the wall? I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but... You're starting to think it'd be okay to let the loop happen again, aren't you? Oh, oh, that's not so right. You can't do that, Master! You need to do everything in your power to stop it! Got it? Pinky promised me! Why do I have to? Because if the loop happens again, next time we won't be able to do be together, Master! What? What do you mean by that? If he dies, so will I! Then all the fun we had will. That's why I want you to stay alive forever. That's why I. Yeah, what the heck? Is this the only loop you'll be allowed in? This is where the fun begins, Master! So, uh, don't die! Got oh, yeah, he did say that. Got it? Wow, you really are strong, Master! Maybe I lucked out on you. Oh, wait. Huh. Salmon really wants this version of me to stay alive. Lucked out on me. Hmm. He really wants this loop to succeed. With me. For some reason. I knew something felt off. You knew all along, didn't you? You knew I'd get killed. You knew about my death and the loop. What are you talking about? I... Uh... We can't die during app battles. You told me we'd be revived after. Yet you just begged me not to die. Did I go see something weird like that? Just forget about it. <laughs> Do you think such a capable familiar, familiar as myself would... um? Salmon. <laughs> um, Master? I don't like the way you're looking at me. Uh, are you really going to grill me on this? Uh, well, uh, can we change the topic? I, uh, I deserve it. I have somewhere to be. How much do you know? Tell me everything. Uh, uh. You grab little Salmon by both shoulders, blocking any means of escape. Little Salmon, are you... What are you? Who exactly are you? Master, do you not trust me? You don't trust me? I... I trust you. I want to trust you. You, who've been, he been with me from the start. Master. Master, I... I can't go beyond this loop. At least that's what Dad told me. I don't have a real body. I'm a construct of memories. A, a construct of memories? I'm made up of memories cut away from the original. So, sort of like... Uh, Yogshiro, or... But you seem very real. You don't seem like just memories. That's why I can't make it out of this loop. I can't escape the Great Flood of Time. I was told that if this the loop happens, then I get washed away too. 
You can't make it out of the loop? You're just memories? Did he say dad? That's why I was so scared that you'd find out. If you'd always known about the loop, had you known that everything would just start over, that you just come back to life no matter what happened. Oh, well, I'm sure you wouldn't have been so careful. You would have gotten yourself killed, and I wouldn't wash away to who knows where. I just want to have as much fun as possible together before the loop ended. But, but... I've always had this feeling that this might be the end. This would be, this would be the final loop. I thought that maybe, just maybe, I wouldn't get washed away if I was right. I hope that I should have given up long ago it feels like it's right before my eyes. That's why I got scared. I thought I heard something out here, and look, and look what I found. A couple of rubbernecks. Oh, and not your typical rubbernecks either. Hey, you two over there. You two? <laughs> Though Tokyo may seem large, you'll find it feels so small at times. You can see someone? Isn't that right? What? Oh, floating dragon? Do you not think? The young boy points to you and then little someone. Uh-huh? Are you talking to me? Never thought I'd ever meet someone else with a companion who's a part of him. What? Can you see little someone? Wait, is it a part of them? I am so lost. Wait a second. This kid must be... How do I put it? Separated from himself? In that case, he can probably see the same things you can. So anyone who has some sort of self-separation, some sort of a... a schism within themselves, they, they can see... Uh... L Lil Salmon. It's not just the thing that, that just the protagonist does. Isn't that dragon you're talking to a part of you that's been cut off? A dragon? Uh, various concepts. Oh, I get it now. You gather them with that ring. It's just like our... A part of me? Gather various concepts? What the hell are you talking about? What? Were you unaware? Perhaps I said something I shouldn't have. Ah, uh, as my old chief once said, price your info as high as the customer is willing to pay. Sounds like a friend line. Didn't Shuichi mention this? Just as you decide to press the boy further, he fills the space between you and his bailey. Heh, <laughs> you wouldn't be passing through here without crossing blades with me first. Oh, oh my god, it's this theme! In with the ogres! I, we are Musashi, the dual wielder, a samurai under the employment of the Kamata crafters. We're getting paid to keep our intruders out computers, but it's been peaceful for so long, we're starting to get treated like a freeloader. Now, you show up. Seriously, nice timing. So let's just cut to the crap and get right to that little thing you called an application battle. Wait, aren't you streets with friend? I'm just... That was not the time to chat. We gotta show our clients that we're what we're made of. Um, yo, what's your name? I think I've heard your name before, but I can think about that after I wipe the floor with your face. Then we advance. Prepare yourself to contend with the brilliance of our sword arms. You know what I think? About? I should probably equip you have the protagonist uh, myself and to sixth slot. Usashi's five wings shine as if fueled by his low speech. これ、本で見たやつです。お前とどうかしら。これ、ついてくるがいい。二軸者どもは。それが死に続け。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い。強い
Okay, I'm angry. I'm beyond angry. Oh my god, alright. You just scared this bitch. Four turns of guts, two turns of combat. Yeah, okay, I'll just camp over here. Okay. Is he immune to fear? Yeah, I'm so fucking screwed. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Can you please not, Musashi? Oh, fuck this fucking shit. <laughs> okay, please die now. Oh, wait, he has guts. Oh my fucking god, no! <laughs> no! Well, that was fucking ridiculous. Thank goodness for protection and curse. Okay, fine. Enjoy your time way over there. I'll just move you over here. <laughs> Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> what are you gonna do, bitch? <laughs> you got nothing on me. Alright, finish him off, Leek. You got this. Eat shit and die! Wait, there's no end battle? Okay. Ugh. Am I dead? Break awakens in a dark room, lying atop what looks like a surgical bed. Where am I? I remember being outside. What kind of room is this? I remember collapsing in front of some building. I couldn't move my body, and then... My body almost felt like it was resting over, but I think I can move freely again now. His, his extremities, which previously cracked and groaned, now moved similarly to a well-oiled machine. Someone repaired him? Ah, right, he's in the... He snuck into the Kamata Crafters Guild, so maybe they thought he was a tool of some sort and repaired him. What happened? I don't understand any of this. Huh? Ray can hear footsteps drawing towards him, and he readies himself for a fight. The body suit covering Ray's robotic form begins to flow, as if it were liquid, morphing itself into a blade. Hmm. The moment that foot the footsteps reach the room, Ray thrusts his blade at the unknown intruder. Whoa! Like, way to be grateful for the person who repaired you. Don't come any closer! Who? Hey there. C calm down. I see you're finally awake. 
Ray growls at the larger man beaming down at him. I said, don't move. Are you the one who brought me here? Answer my questions. Where are we? What did he do to my body? Break, ready for anything, throws down his snout at the man. You're being awfully rude to the one who picked you off the street and fixed you. The man wearing a jumpsuit answers timidly, although he seems unperturbed by the blade leveled awfully close to his throat. You fixed me? Who are you? Calm down. I don't want a, any coin. A popper like you probably couldn't pay anyway. <laughs> Why did he save me then? Are you saying he fixed me with no ulterior motive? Uh, that's a weird question. I'm a mechanic. When I see a machine like you, I just have to poke around and see what makes a tick. A machine? Then I really am a robot? What? You didn't know? Yes, you are a robot. A tool. A tool of war. A war machine, if you will. A tool of war? Now it's my turn to ask questions. Who told you of my workshop? Why are you quiet all of a sudden? Sorry, I was still processing. Can you repeat the question? Who told you about my workshop? Didn't you come here with a gold in mind? I was just wandering around when I collapsed. Then, the next thing I knew, I was here. So I just happened to pick you up? I guess that makes sense. Listen, I'm really sorry about a minute ago. I hope you'll forgive my rudeness. But there's one more thing I need to ask. Who are you? Don't worry about that. I would have felt weird if you treated me any other way. Something about being berated like that makes me feel comfortable. Uh, no comment. Okay. <laughs> okay. So back to my question. Who are you? You c can tell by looking at me. I'm j just some ugly arms dealer. You're an arms dealer? I'm only useful to warmongers and can't make any real friends. <laughs> I'm surrounded by machines of war, which only serves purpose in war. We're about done, right? I have plans after this. Anyway, I'm sure you have some battlefield to head to. This whole city will become a battlefield soon enough. Uh, hmm? Talos, our client is leaving. Can you see him out? Understood. I will obey the creator. Huh. A look of shock crosses Break's face as he takes in the new arrival. After Break is let outside, the man in his jumpsuit begins muttering to himself. Uh, there's no mistake. That be engraved on his peep his pee parts. <laughs> oh, no, he's stuttering. <laughs> that be engraved as his p parts. At least one of his creators in the same vein of genius as me. The guild master of those politing warmongering. Is it the warmongers? Is he part of the warmongers? A genius with two B's in her name. Two B's in her name? I don't understand. If that's the case, he must be p p part of the battle against the south and the east. Okay. So there's the west, the south, and the east, I think. The west, the south, and the east. The east is where we are. The south is the, the east. The west, the, the west is where the, you know, Amaterasu and Michael and the rest are. No, th no, that's where the warmongers are. I guess the south would have to be uh, Amaterasu and Jacob and stuff like that. So, it looks like he's talking as if he's part of the west, which would be part of the warmongers. Yeah, it looks like he's dealing arms for the warmongers. That he's come all the way here means... Oh! Kamata's in danger! It'll turn into a war zone! The large man panics for a short time, until, all at once, he springs ramrod straight into resolution. I am a tool. A tool for others to use in times of war. But, the p p precious one who didn't simply use me as a tool. She'll be coming soon. My mama... 
would only assume that would have to refer to Curran. Because that's like the only potentially mechanical looking person. I know because that's what happens in every loop. How does he know what happens in every loop? I need to hurry for Mama. Ah, come on. Another man comes down to the stairs, significantly calmer than the larger man presently in a panic. He speaks. I have completed my task, Hephaestus. The large man acknowledges the newly returned man's presence with a look, then addresses him in a tone full of loathing. Huh. Hey, you're late, Talos. C quick, get in your maintenance bed. That break. I filled it around with him, and finally came to understand. That like Alan wolves, the scavengers of the battlefield are within him. Oh, what? Blue wolf. Like, oh, I don't know why this took so long for me to click. Was, so Odin's wolves break as one of them. Or maybe, like, he was modified to be part of that. Huh. The ones that devour the corpses. Out of uh, the, the corpses from whose memories uh, Odin takes with a secret artifact. He devours the remaining of those who have completed their roles, assembling their flesh into his own. He's taken more than that wolf, though. He has assimilated many transients. No, perhaps the cause and effect are reversed. That's not all. He has also taken on the memories of many transients. This voracious system reaps the memories of others, making them its own. I guess that wolf is perfect for such a system. But cramming multiple personalities into a single vessel? You could only expect it to break eventually. Ah, uh, this is kind of similar to our little samurai. Musashi, break, now becoming like the protagonist. And my mama, a large number of minds crammed inside a single vessel. Even if this is different from some groundbreaking technology, it's obviously the work of some genius. Was I able to parse its construction in previous loops? Oh, I don't get this. Those w warmongers only gave me a part of the story. Damn it! But I'm Hephaestus, the genius technician of Olympus. My genius w will never fall behind the works of others. The flames of inspiration burn brightly in the technician's eyes as he cries out. <laughs> I'll show them. Talos! I'm going to use the time I have to left to upgrade you. Affirmative, Hephaestus. Nothing would please me more than to serve you. Talos, my ideal man. My, the ideal tool. You must become the ideal me. Rise above the rest, and then... Then you must be loved by Mama. Yes, my creator. I swear to carry out your commands. <laughs> the sounds of Hephaestus tinkering fills the workshop. Okay, and our battle with Musashi. Hey, we're getting a phone call. Wait, no, it's the interphone. Hey, can someone get that? Hello? Hey, have face this. Where do you get off to? Alright, wrong place. Alright, Kurgani it is in. Oh, that's right, he's off seeing a friend. Takamaru! Oi, Takamaru, is there seriously nobody here? Huh? You've got to be kidding me. No one's home. The phone's ringing. Those little brats making me get the phone. Bunch of no-good slouches, that lot of them. The old man complains to himself as he answers the interphone. He hears a feeble-sounding voice on the other side. Hey, he's a lot old. Hello? I have an appointment with you today. Sorry to keep you waiting. What can I do for you? Um, Mistress Hagu... Uh, my boss told me to pick up some kind of equipment for your guild. Hmm. Is this about the job for the Ropogi Guild? A job after my own heart, that one. Sorry, but Mistress Hockman didn't tell me exactly what I'm supposed to be picking up. Oh, huh? You don't need to worry about that. Come on in. Oh, that's right. I'll go let our Sarian know. Uh, no, it's crass. Oh, that's, that's right. I'll go let our Sarian know to let you through. Did you say samurai? Are they very scary? 
Oh no, he can just get a little worked up when folks come by unannounced. He'll jump at whoever shows up if we don't let him know they're coming by beforehand. Hmm. Hello? Are you still there? Okay. Um, I'm at the school's front gate right now. There's a pretty intense battle going on out here. Ha! There's a what going on? Give me that trance answer. Mm -mm -mm. You go all in the crap, that's part three. 